welcome back to a new tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at replacing the hair on human gen characters with the brand new hair curve system that was released with Blender 3.4. So right off the bat here, we just have a default character on the new beta version of Human Gen. I'm not going to go in and adjust any of the skin settings or face settings. This isn't really the point of this. We're just going to be taking a look at hair curves. Uh, so to get started, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select our character and I'm going to delete all the particle systems. We don't need any of those. Uh, sometimes on characters I like to keep the eyelashes because eyelashes can be kind of tricky and the particle system that Human Gen has set up for those tends to work pretty well, um, but for this instance, I'm going to go ahead and delete everything. I'm also going to turn on subsurf scattering for the skin, just so things look a little nicer, uh, just a little less harsh. So to get started, we're going to select our character, we're going to hit Shift A to add a new object, and we're going to select Curve and Empty Hair. Now right off the bat, I like to put that immediately in a new, uh, in a new collection just so that we can keep everything organized. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this Beard One. And we're gonna find out why a little bit later down the road. Now, opposed to particle systems where you spawn the particles and you control them in the tab down here, the new hair curve system is uh, controlled entirely with sculpt tools. So to start controlling that, we're gonna go up to where it says object mode up here and we're gonna select sculpt mode. And I'm gonna select this one right here for the add tool. I'm gonna make sure symmetry is turned on along the X axis. So anything we add to the skin will add on both sides. Now you can see immediately right off the bat, not exactly, not exactly looking like hair. Uh, <laughs> and that's because um, in our settings over here, we have a little bit of work to do. So using the delete tool over here, I'm gonna just get rid of those hairs. I'm gonna go back to the add tool and I'm gonna find an appropriate length for this beard. So I'm gonna start at 0 .0, uh, let's try 0 0.04. Yeah, that's a little bit better. That's a little bit better of a length. You can see that things aren't, aren't exactly working correctly. So the first step is to go into our, renders, uh, our render tab. I like to switch over to cycles because I render primarily in cycles down here on curves and view uh, port display. I'm gonna crank the additional subdivisions all the way up to three, and I'm gonna bring the curve subdivisions up to four. Now, I'm not addressing the thickness issue yet, and that's because we have a, we have a little bit of an ace up our sleeve. So on the Blender Studio website, the, uh, the guys over at the Blender Studio just released their open movie called Charge. Now the great thing about the Blender Studio is if, uh, if you pay a small fee, you can get access to every single file they use to make the movie. But a bunch of these are also free bunch of these files and one of the files that is free is the hair grooming file you can download it right here this link will be down in the description and this is a great way to shortcut the some of the more tedious work you have to do in geometry nodes to get a decent setup with hair curves so on our file here I'm gonna go to file append now I have it selected here blender hair geo nodes I have that set up in a bookmark so I can find it easily I'm gonna select the uh, hair file and under node tree, I'm going to take all of these nodes and I'm going to append those into our file. So as you can see, that hasn't actually done anything yet. Um, but the way that we add those are over here, make sure your hair uh, curve system is selected and select the wrench tool. And here you can add modifiers and you can add geo, uh, geo nodes hair modifiers. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a geometry nodes modifier from the drop down here. Now we can see all of those files that we just appended from the Blender Studio file. And one of these is hair thickness. Just like that, hair thickness. Now this is, uh, this is really easy to set up at this point because now you can copy and paste these hair systems uh, to different parts of the mesh and start with a system that has a unified thickness. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a new tab here for the GeoNodes editor so we can take a closer look at what this is actually doing. So you can go ahead and you can change the parameters of this really easily, get different looks. If you want the hair to be a little less sharp on the end, you can bring up this handle here. You can pull these up in any way that you want to adjust your thickness of uh, whatever hairs you want. Um, for beard hairs, depending on how short they are, they will have a flatter edge, especially if it's something like stubble. Uh, the longer hairs will taper more into a point. Uh, eyebrow hairs, they get pretty pointy on the end. Eyelashes get pretty pointy on the head, uh, on the end. Hair on the head, usually, you know, if someone's maintaining a haircut, that hair 
has more of a flat thickness curve to it than it would if it was longer hair. So that's that's great that we can adjust these and that, that comes in really handy when you're building more complex systems. So now that we have the hair thickness set up, I'm gonna go ahead to the delete option here under the sculpt tools, and I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all the hairs that we already brought in. And I'm gonna go back to add, and I'm going to bring our count up here to like 20, to like 20 to start. This is just to get a basic idea of the shape. And now I'm just gonna paint hair in where I think uh, this guy's beard would grow. If you want a little bit more of a responsive viewport, you can always head over to viewport shading and that will speed things up a little bit. So now we've given the guy a little bit of the uh, Amish paradise, which is exactly what we were, exactly what we were looking for. I'm just gonna fill this in a little bit just so that we can kind of keep a little bit of density. Now, you, there is a density option here and density is really cool. If you hit shift uh, R, you can visualize in points the density. There's a bit of a glitch that I've experienced. If I bring the density down to uh, more dense than what we've already painted and I start adding hair, well, you can just see what it does. It adds, it adds hair like this. So the way that I've gone around that is I've painted in the hair that I want to be more dense than what I need. And then I use the density tool to delete hair rather than add them. So we have a denseness across the entire model. So now you might be looking at this and thinking, well, this, yeah, this looks great, but it looks like an Amish guy who got electrocuted, which is not very likely to happen. So how do we fix that? Well, just like in the particle hair system, we have a comb. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit. I'm gonna bring the strength down a little bit, and I'm just gonna start combing this down a little bit. Now, one thing that the hair curves is missing that uh, particles had that was very helpful was interaction with the model. The hair will freely just pass through the model uh, and that's uh, something you got to keep an eye on. It's pretty easy to uh, it's pretty easy to work around. These tools are very quick. They're very responsive and of course you can always go take a look inside the model to see where things are intersecting. As you can see it doesn't take too long before we start to get results that look pretty good. Now the, the, this guy is a little bit too quaffed. He's a little bit too uh, well kept. So uh, one of the uh, geometry nodes that comes with the Blender Studio uh, file is hair noise, which is my personal favorite. So hair noise will do exactly what it says on the tin. It adds noise to your hair curves. So I'm gonna bring this up a little bit, and then you also have scale options. So obviously the scale of the noise is how, how much deviation from its original line there is, how many uh, variations per unit of distance if that makes sense and then the shape here brings the hair away from the hair root which is really which is really helpful so we can start to give it a little bit more of a random look now the reason that i called this beard one is because at this point i can duplicate the beard one i can rename this to beard two and then now in beard two i can boost up the shape I'll bring the scale up a little bit too, maybe something like 60. Yeah, and then I can go into sculpt mode, I can go into the density brush, I can bring that density somewhere like there, and I can start removing huge amounts of the beard. But what does this give us? This gives us flyaways, essentially. This gives us randomness in the beard. So this might be a little bit much, and actually, honestly, I might even put less if this was a actual character that I was working on. I might bring this down a little bit. But now we can get random hair that is separated from the model. So let's jump uh, into render view and uh, give you a look at what this looks like. So here we are in rendered view and you can see that things are starting to look pretty good. Now there's no material added to this yet, so that's the next step. We're gonna add another GeoNodes modifier, and this one we're gonna do manually. So over on the GeoNodes panel here, I'm gonna hit New, and I'm gonna select Set Material, and I'm gonna plop that in. Now if you're using HumanGen, we can just piggyback off of the hair um, material setups that already come with the model, and we can use those. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to the other one as well. I'm gonna go ahead and call this uh, material. And on beard two, 
add another geo node and then select material and there now we have hair that is set up with our human gen hair uh, setup so if we select our human gen character and we select the hair material then we can go in here and we can start to adjust that so i'm going to slide this over to accurate it gives a little bit more of a nice uh transmission value i'm going to bring this down in lightness and redness a little bit kind of give it more of a gray look and add a little bit of salt and pepper in there just to give some color variation and i'm going to bring the roughness down just a little bit so there we go that was pretty quick and now we have a pretty good uh, beard setup I'm going to jump back over to viewport shading and I'm going to select beard 2 I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call this mustache I'm going to hide beard 1 and beard 2 for now so that I can jump into sculpt mode and make sure that I get every hair deleted that I need to. So now because we duplicated this, beard one and beard two still exist. We can turn those back on. We can select our add brush. I'm going to bring this down a little bit, maybe 0.02, make sure symmetry is on. And watch what happens when I start to paint hair in. It has inherited the previous Geonodes setup. So this is looking a little wild, it's looking a little it's looking a little crazy, but with a little bit of grooming. We can start to get a result that looks pretty good. Now because I copied this from beer 2, the noise levels are a little high, so I'm going to bring that down to maybe 0.16. Let's see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to grab the puff tool here, and that just adds a little bit of it kind of pulls the hair apart a little bit, just adds a little bit of volume. And then on the end here, I'm going to take the pinch option and I'm going to pinch the ends of the mustache together. Give this guy a little bit of a uh, Perot going on here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to curl these up. Yeah, so now, now he's a bartender in Austin. Perfect. So you can see pretty easily here we can start to get results that, first of all, are way more responsive in the viewport, way easier to work with, and are much easier to edit. I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking, ah, oh, maybe there's things I wanna change in Beard 1. I can select Beard 1. Make sure that when you're in sculpt mode, you have to press the little icon here next to the tool so that you can edit it without going to object mode and then back into sculpt mode. But that being said, maybe I want to add a little bit more hair up to the bottom of the lip here. Maybe I want to add a little bit more density covering the chin. That's something that I can do. And then I can just comb that back into place. And look at that. This took, what, a couple minutes really to set all this up. And because we're hijacking the um, geometry node setups from the Blender Studio file, we get way further way quicker here's another character in progress i have uh it's it's working its way up to be a likeness of pedro pascal but right now honestly it looks like a somewhat very distant cousin but the uh the hair system that i have on this particular character is something i'm incredibly proud of so let's take a look at that real quick so i have this set up into uh, i think it's like 32 hair curves on this and uh we're just going to go by one by one and just take a look at each one of, uh what each one of these uh do so the first is mustache under the lip beard shape beard uh fill eyebrows eyelashes and then back of the back of the head hair which i think is a pretty strong contender for 2023 hairstyle of the year and then hair fill top which uh, honestly i can't condone this it looks ridiculous and then the sides this is just to fill in detail and then from now on we got what i call the swoops and the swoops are uh individual tufts of hair that build out the detail of a fully formed hairstyle so each one of these is just a single clump that is added to a part of the head that needed detail and then pinched together using the pinch tool and then uh, combed into place using the comb tool. Really, really simple. Um, there's some spots missing obviously from the back of the head here, but from the camera view, it does exactly what it needs to do. And honestly, I think it looks pretty great. And look how fast that renders. This is a human gen character using 8K skin textures that has a three level 
um, multi-res sculpt on it, including skin texture and pores, and probably hundreds and thousands of individual strands of hair. And the fact that it's rendering this quickly with a physically based material on the hair is absolutely incredible. I don't think I could have done anything nearly as good as this in the old hair particle system. It would have taken it would have taken months probably for me to for me to do that and to have this many hair. And none of these are virtual children. None of these are extrapolated between different points. These are all in the scene. These are all easy to edit. These are look look how responsive and quick this is. It's it's incredible. If you guys have any other tips and tricks on hair curves, let me know in the comments because uh, I'm still learning this as well and I would love to get uh, new techniques and new ideas. So let me know. And until next time, see you guys later.